All right, so you're going to start out with your plain white template, YouTube intro template. Make sure you're using the right sizes. And then you're going to click on your background and you're going to change the color. I'm using this blue color here. Now we're going to go to uploads and we're going to get the photo that is going to be in our center of our um, intro, which is this one here. Go to edit image and remove background. If you don't have Camera Pro to remove the background, just go to remove.bg. It is a free photo background remover website. And all you have to do is upload your photo. It'll remove the background and then you'll download it and upload it into Canva. Now we're going to make this photo bigger. You want your center photo to like really stand out more. So I think I'm good with that size right there. Now... Going back to edit image, we're going to go to shadows. We're going to hit glow, hit glow again. So you want to hit glow twice and then you want to change the color to pink. And I'm just going to keep it on its natural or original settings. All right, and that's how you want it to look. Now I am going to go back to elements and I'm going to search blur. Under graphics, hit see all, and this is the one that I'm going to be using. It is a free blur. I'm trying to make sure I'm using a lot more free elements when I'm doing these tutorials, especially now since I do have the um, paid subscribers where I do add these template links. Now, I'm not sure if I'm going to add this template link to my paid subscribers just because it is a lot more work than just opposed to going in, changing your colors, and changing your name. This one is a, a little bit more work as far as removing the background of your photos and having it added. It's not really much of a template. You will still have a lot to like DIY work to do. So this one won't be getting added. Maybe down the line, I don't know. But not right now. So now you're going to change the color. Change it to pink, the same pink as you outline your photo with. Go to position and hit two back. Also, want to make this a little bit bigger. Make sure it's centered behind your head. All right. I'm also going to add the animation to my um, photo. So just click on your photo, go to animate, and hit drift. And we'll keep it on this same setting. So make sure direction is going to the right. All right. Now go to the elements and you're going to search grid. You're going to use this second grid right here with the two frames. And as you can see, it'll automatically fit your whole template. But you can see that space in here. We don't want that. So click on your frame, go to spacing, and just move this bar down to zero. Just like that. Now you're going to work with your photos that's going in these frames. So as you can see, we can't see our background color anymore. But once we add our photos in these frames following my exact steps, you will be able to see your background color. So go to uploads. Now you want to work with your second photo. We're going to remove the background. Just like that. So you want to make sure your background is removed. Now you don't have to necessarily remove the background, but for the this style of um, template that I'm doing, I suggest that you do just so you can be able to see your image, your background color. And you don't even have to use this grid if you don't want to. You can just kind of place the, um, your photos however you want, but. I thought the grid was easier just for placement wise and it just makes it easier for you all when you're creating this template from scratch to not have to figure out how to place it, the spacing and all of that. So that's why I use the grid. Okay, so now we're going to duplicate this photo. You want to make sure you duplicate it without the background. There we go. And we're just going to drag these into the frames. And as you can see, we can now see our um, background color. And that's what we want. Just be before I move on to finishing up with these photos, I'm going to move the grid so you can see 
the color. So you see your normal color, you see your grid here. You can click on your color once you move the grid and you can change your color to whatever color it is that you would like. And then you will move back your grid up. You'll move your grid up just so your pictures are where they're supposed to be. And as you can see, you can see right through your grid because you removed the background from your photos. But let's switch our color back because that's what we want. All right. So now we have our photos set in place. Click on your frame, go to animate and go to photo rise and you're going to keep it on the same settings so we'll enter and going in the direction upwards so now you're done with your photos now i'm going to type out kiki palmer i'm going to make this bigger and i already know the sizing so i'm going to change this to 159 and i'm only making it this size because of the font that i'm going to use which is antonio so this is the font that i'm using and as you can see it kind of shrinks it so just depending on what font you use is the sizing that you want to like play with so now we have our font ready to go we're going to change our color we're going to change it to pink Oops, make sure you click on it. Sometimes you gotta double click. There we go. So now you can see it better. We're gonna change this text box to pink. But now before we move on, we're gonna go to spacing and we're gonna type in 259. Right where letter spacing is. You don't need to worry about line spacing. Don't do anything with that. And I'm just gonna hit enter. Now if you're doing this on your phone, um, you can type in 259 and then it'll like once you click off of it it'll adjust the spacing or you can just use this bar here and adjust it until you get the amount of spacing that you want and remember with every name depending on length is how you are going to adjust your spacing but okay so now we have our um, first text box place it where you want it to go and we're going to add an animation. We're going to add neon to our text. Okay. Now I'm clicking on our text. What you are going to do is go to position and you're going to hit backward one time. Don't hit two back. You want to make sure you hit backward one time because you want this text box to go behind this photo, but you still want it to be able to see the rest on top of these photos on the outside see i hit backward once and now our text went behind this photo but you can see it clearly over these two photos and that's what we want so now you're going to duplicate that text box duplicate it you're going to change the text color to blue the same color as your background go to effects hit hollow just like that and you're going to move this right over top of that pink text. So make sure it's lined up perfectly. Just like that. Now, we're going to play this slide to see how it looks. And that's what we want. As you can see, I chose to do one text behind the photo, the middle photo, and one text over top of the photo, just so we have this effect here where you can see some of the image as the photo moves. I really like that look. So this is our first slide. We're going to move on to the second slide. All right, so you're just going to hit add a page, just like that. Now we are going to type out, um, it's Kiki Palmer, baby. Her baby is key for Let me see what I typed for the second page. I can't remember. All right. So we're going to type out baby this is Kiki Palmer. So you know her little phrase that she like says. Oops, I don't know. I'm trying to get the exclamation point. There we go. Let's make this bigger. 
I'm going to move this up here and we're going to change this font. Um, which font did I use for this? Okay. Um, Alright, I just had to make sure I type in the right font. So I'm just going to type in that font, which is this one here. So you want to make this bigger so you can actually see it. And we're going to change the color to pink. Again, you might have to like click it a few times so the color inserts. Now we're going to go to effects and hit lift. Just like that. So now you have your um, text here. You can add an animation to this if you want, but I'm not going to. Now what we're going to go over to our elements and we're going to search for a record. Right where it says graphics, hit see all. And we're just going to go in and get this simple record option right here and place in the corner like this move it down a little bit um, just place it however you want now we're going to search laptop under elements under graphics hit see all um, let me see which one I'm going to use or which one I used in the beginning was it okay so this is the one we use now it is a pro um, element which is also another reason why I won't be adding this template for the paid subscribers because again it's a little bit more work and it doesn't have that pro um, I meant the free version or at least not for the style that I want it. I'm just clicking around just to see if I see another one that I liked. But no, this is the one that I'm going to go ahead and choose. So let's make this a little smaller. Alright, I just adjusted the sizing a little bit off camera. So now, as you can see, we have our plain transparent background, and we are going to go ahead and go back into grids. So search grid, hit see all, and I'm going to choose this grid right here with the three frames. Just like that. So before I adjust the sizing, I'm just going to leave it just like this for a minute, but I am going to um, remove the spacing. But before I adjust the sizing to fit behind the laptop, this is the part where you are going to go ahead and add your videos or photos if you don't want to use videos. It's completely up to you. You can do different videos, the same videos. Again, it's all your choice. But I'm just going to go ahead and add those to the frames and I'll come back. All right, so I wrote the videos on the page. I actually want to show y'all how I add them into the frames and how I you can edit it really quickly in um, Canva. So just click on your video, go to the scissors up here, and of course I'm gonna crop out the beginning because I only want it to be a clear shot, and I want to crop out the end where my um, phone screen shows up. And I'm really just going to make this just a few seconds, like literally a few seconds. So this video is 2.2 seconds. You don't need them to be long. You don't want them to be long because the longer you make them, the longer your intro will be. And you don't want an extra long intro. So now I'm going to hit done after I crop out the video part that I want. And now I'm going to crop out what's shown. So sometimes when you're working with like videos and trying to crop them out and add them into frames sometimes everything that you want cropped out is just not going to be cropped out because once you move it into the frame it has to fill up a certain amount of space so I'm going to add that one here 
Now it looks blurry right now and it looks like it still has that beginning um, frame, but it doesn't. We'll play it once I edit the rest of these. So I'm going to do the same steps. Click on your, my scissors and I'm just going to crop it down from in the beginning and at the end. And I like to watch it just to make sure I like the way it looks. So this one is 2.3 seconds and I'm going to hit done. And then I'll add this into the frames. We'll adjust them a little bit more once we add it into the frames. Anyway, and I'm going to do the same thing for the last video. Alright, so I adjusted the last video off camera. So now I'm going to click on my frame. And it looks crazy, but I promise when you go to play it and you actually download it, it's not going to look like that. It's just, I don't know why it's like that on Canva. But you're just going to make your frame smaller to fit inside the laptop screen. Um, hit position. Make sure that your frame is behind the laptop. It'll be it'll just make it more seamless when you are adjusting the sizes and things. So you don't like have anything hanging over. So, so right now it's behind the frame. My uh, photo grid is behind the laptop frame, right? So I'm going to click on my photo grid and I'm going to hit arrange and I'm going to hit to front and you can't really tell now because I got a perfect um, size perfectly, but if you were to adjust your frame like over top of this grid, like that, that it, it would just make it not look as good. So that's why I suggest making sure your grid is positioned behind your laptop frame instead of um, on top so that when you adjust the sizing, you have more like black space to like make it bigger. And it still looks like it fits perfectly inside the frame. I hope you guys understand what I mean by this. So I'm going to hit too big because I want to make sure it's behind our frame. I'm going to zoom in and just look around the border. As you can see, what I mean, like the border is really seamless. Um, you can go ahead and play the videos. They'll all play at once when you like go to play it when you're done so yeah you can also make these videos longer if you like but i'm just trying to speed up this template so as you can see we still see like stuff in our videos that we might not want shown so what you're going to do is go to position. You're going to click on your grid frame right here where you can see all three videos because I want to work with my grid. So now I'm just going to click on the first box. Oops. So let me just move it out the way completely. Let me move the laptop frame out the way, guys. Sorry. I'm just going to move that there for a second. I'm going to zoom in so you can see what I'm doing. So double click on the frame that you want. And as you can see now, you can kind of like move it in some. And that's what I'm going to do. Move it in and you can like rearrange it however you want. So if you have stuff that's not like cropped out once you add it into the frame, you can kind of play with it like this. Again, it's up to you of what you want shown and what you don't want shown. Alright, so I'm good with it. I'm not going to like harp too much on it because I'm going to get this tutorial up and ready for you all today. So, alright, let's make sure... Wow. Just want to be careful moving your laptop frame over it. I'm going to lock this and see if that helps while I adjust this frame. 
All right, so I had to adjust that off camera, but now everything is back in place. And you want to make sure your laptop frame as well as your grid is centered. So I like using layers because it helps me click on the element that I want to work on, especially when things are layered like the grid and the laptop a lot easier. So I can click on the grid and I can just work on the grid. I can click on the laptop and I can just work on a laptop without messing up the grid. It's a little bit more difficult to do with photo frames, but it's still easy, easier and I like this option better as opposed to hitting a range because you can just see clearly everything that's in your template. All right, let me stop rambling. <laughs> So now we're going to go back to elements and we're going to search for like where your graphics is hit see all and I'm going to scroll until I see this one right here. So this is the one that I'm using. This is free. Again, I'm trying to use as many free elements as possible when I'm doing these tutorials now. Just so y'all can have access to the same things that I'm using. So I'm going to hit the red frame. And I'm going to change this to pink. And I'm going to hit the last frame. Or no. Is it the last one? I'm going to play with it. Okay, so yeah. Either or. So I'm hitting, I hit the last frame and I change it to the same background color as our background. And I'm going to do the same with the numbers. So the first frame you want to change to pink. And then these two you want to match it to your background color just so it looks like transparent. And now I'm just going to place that here. Like this slide was like really, really simple and easy to do. But also like a really cute addition to... Um, your intro. Let me delete this first page. Okay. So now I'm going to play it just to see how everything looks and just so you can see how everything looks as well. That's the first page. This is the second page. So you see what I mean of how the videos are clear even though when you pause it, it kind of looks off. But anywho, I'm going to add a transition in between the first and the second page. And I'm going to use Dissolve. Just like that. Um, once you add a transition, you might want to go back in and adjust like your videos and make them just a teeny bit longer so this slide is a little bit longer. I'm just going to keep mine the same. So I think every video in here was like 2 point something seconds, but... Or maybe even shorter than that. But I could have made it the videos a little bit longer. But now we're going to move on to our third page. So hit add a page. And this page is really simple and easy to do. So we shall walk through this really quickly. Alright, so now I'm just going to type out stay connected. We're going to make this... Um, lowercase actually let's make this smaller it's making it a little smaller okay so 77 this is the font Antonio by the way and it is on the letter spacing 259 so you can just type in 259 in this box where you can scale this bar to 259. Anywho, so now we're going to change the colors to pink. We also want to make this bold. Um, and you want to make sure it's centered. Okay. And we're going to add the animation neon on it. So hit animate and scroll down to neon. And I'm just going to keep it on this same um, settings. Just like that. 
Now we are going to add our social media platforms, but let me change this font to Canva Sans. And I'm also going to make this smaller. So you want to type out whatever social media platforms you want your subscribers to um, follow you on. And this one is going to be in all caps. So Instagram, oops, TikTok, and I'm just going to put Twitter. Let me move this over to the center. I'm actually going to make this smaller. And I'm going to change the color to white. Alright. So now, we're not going to add any animation to this one, but you can if you want. Oh, and also, let's adjust the spacing. So we're going to adjust the space into 459. I'm going to make this a little smaller. I don't want this taking up too much space. I'm going to do about 31. Okay, I'm good with that. Add it to the center. Okay. So, again, depending on which like platforms you choose or what font you choose is how you want to um, size it. I actually feel like I want to make this spread out more. So, I'm going to go back to spacing and I'm going to change this to... I don't know, 492, yeah. And I kind of want it to be a little bit bigger. All right, so now it's 31.9. Okay, I'm good with that. Um, now I'm just going to hit C on my keyboard, but um, if you're using your phone, just go to Elements. Right where it says shapes, hit C all and just get the circle. I'm going to shrink this circle as small as possible and I'm going to change the color to pink. And this is just going to break up our platform. So I'm just putting it in between. Kind of want to, you want to make sure it's centered. Okay. And I'm going to do the same with this side. I'm actually going to, let me position this to the back. Because I want to fix these a little bit. They're a little too low. All right, so whatever, it's good right there. You can adjust it as you would need to. So then now I'm going to go back to elements and I'm going to type in circle frame. And you're gonna get this first circle from right there. Let's make this smaller. All right. All right, I just added the image off camera because I had to reload the page. So now you have your image. Now we're going to go back to the elements and we're going to type in circle shadow. Right where it says graphics, hit see all. And I'm going to get this one right here. It looks like that. And it's the third row down and it is free. And you want to place this behind your picture, but we're going to make this smaller because we just want the um, shadow part showing so move it a little bit behind your photo like that so it doesn't go into your frame and then go to position and hit two back this allows you to work on it without messing it up a little bit you may have to start bigger 
and then make it smaller. So yeah, it's a lot of like playing around with this until you can adjust it. All right, so I'm just gonna start here and then you're just gonna adjust it until you only see like the shadow part. So you don't wanna really see like the circle part of it, just the shadow. All right, so I'm good with the way that it looks. You can see how it kind of gives it a little bit more like pop out effect underneath the circle frame. So I'm good with it. Now I'm gonna go to elements and I'm just gonna get this square right here, the first square, hit the color up here. And this time I'm gonna make it um, no color. So I'm gonna hit that. And then I'm gonna go to border style and I'm gonna hit border. And I'm just gonna keep the border weight on four. I'm going to change the color to pink. Oops. You want to make sure you change the border color to pink. So make sure you click on border color and then change it to pink. And I'm just going to resize it to about right there. And I'm also going to stretch it out. All right. So I'm good with that. Now I am just going to go over to elements and type search. And I'm getting a magnifying glass. I'm just going to get this one. Extremely like that one here. And I'm going to keep it black. And I'm just going to make it small enough to fit here. Alright, now I'm just going to type an X. You could um, actually search for um, a search bar in Canva but I'm just showing you how you can make one on your own because I do have Canva Pro so there are a lot more available to me that I actually like but the free ones I just don't like the changing the colors the way the colors are change or that you can't adjust the sizing too much so I just made one on my own you don't have to do this step all right, so very simple search bar. And then now I'm just going to type out an add sign. Move that here. I want it to be going to make this bigger. So you want to type in at your um, whatever your social media handle is. We want to change the color to pink. And we are going to use this cursive font here. Make it bigger. Like this. And then we're going to rotate it a little bit. So you want it to be big enough to like pop out of the box. And then we're just going to add an animation. And I'm going to add type here. I'm going to slow it down, but you don't have to. So, yeah. Okay, so we are just going to play it so you can see it from the beginning completed. All right, and that is our intro. Um, very simple, very cute. I really like this style. Let me know your thoughts down below. Like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next one.